Oh, hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry, and Mowers and Blower! Good morning. So I was gonna, when I wake up today, I was gonna get up and work on this. You know, I, I'm thinking it's just a fuel delivery problem. Could be a fuel solenoid issue, or just cleaning the carburetor. Something relatively simple, I hope. Because the guy who owns this, Pete, who wants me to fix it for him or tune it up, says it ran and drive. I tried it, it doesn't run or drive. It may start up, but it starts up for like five seconds and then stops, you know? So there's a fuel delivery problem, I think. I don't think it'll be too tough, I hope. But uh, I haven't really worked on these modern uh, riding mowers uh, before. Not to mention the fact that that's a power no more engine from Zhangshen. Uh, but anyway, a bigger priority for me is to get this one going. This is a Craftsman 929. It's a beast. Uh, I had a few of these before, really nice mower, uh, snow blowers. Uh, being that we're now December something or other, you know, early December, I'm anticipating that snow is gonna hit us relatively soon, sooner than I need to get this going. So I have to see what's wrong with that and get that going. That's a little more important right now because my friend Gary, who's on my gun channel, he's one of my uh, friends from the gun channel, right? He uh, wants the simplicity that I just fixed the other day, and he wants this one for his friend. So he's buying both of them. Uh, I'm giving it to him for cheap because he's my friend, you know what I mean? Just not some nut off the street. And not only that, he's not even paying me in cash. You know how he's paying me? <laughs> With a thousand rounds of AR-15 ammunition, 223 brass, PMC. Uh, I'd rather have ammunition than money at this point. Anyway, so uh, I, I, I got this last year, um, sometime in the summer, I think. My next door neighbor across the street, Darren, his brother was um, giving away, I forget, was it a backpack blower? or I don't remember what he gave me, but he gave me like two things. This was one of them. He says, do you want a snowblower? I says, what do you mean, like for free? He's like, yeah, my brother got a new one. He doesn't want his old one. Do you want it? I says, well, why don't you want it? He goes, I don't even want the one that I have now. I said, I understand. <laughs> he just gave it to me. Uh, he says it ran. So, uh, I mean, I can't really see anything wrong with it, to be honest with you. It's in excellent condition. Uh, I didn't do anything with the tires, the whole air. If you just look at the muffler, it doesn't really look like he used it very much at all because usually with a muffler, it's all rusted out and you have a lot of black exhaust remnants here, which you don't see here. It's almost like the guy never used it and you know that this thing was kept indoors because there's no rust anywhere either. So this is really a nice snowblower. Uh, I probably get a lot of money for it this year if it snowed. But like I said, um, I got it for free and uh, it's for my friend. So if it's for my friend, you know, honestly, you, you, have, to, you have to give a little, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no big deal. Anyway, snowblowers are cheap these days because you just don't know if you're gonna get any more snow, you know? It does have electric start, which is awesome. And uh, this is a Briggs & Stratton, I believe. Oh no, it's a Tecumseh. Usually they're Briggs and Stratton engines on here, but this is more of a, a, a more late model Tecumseh engine, which is good because I have Tecumseh carburetors. <laughs> and if anything was wrong with it, it would be the carburetor. Let's see if we have any gasage in here. I doubt it. Oh, son of a bitch, there is gas. That's not good because you don't know how long this has been sitting in this garage. And I know that I haven't touched this in over eight months, nine months. Usually there was a cover here that had extra um, shear pins in it. And then the cover goes on top. Let's check the Earl. Henry, what Earl? Good Earl. Clear. And as you can see, this thing was regularly serviced. Look how clean that is, see? 
It's missing the snow removal tool, but that's always missing. Yeah, everything looks all right. I could use new snowshoes in the future. I think this will get him by the uh, couple of uh, winters. And I think the uh, Craftsman ones are designed that way. Actually, you could just flip that upside down and reuse it again. You know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. So look, we've got gas. Oil is good. We have no idea about anything else, right? So let's just try to start it. What do you think? What do you think? Okay, it's on uh, choke. Uh, it's missing that handle, you know. It's always missing. But uh, we'll see what we can do about that. It's on uh, full throttle. Hmm. I feel like gas is going there. Primer seems good. What do you guys think? It'll start? I have no idea when this was last started. But it's got gas, oil. Let's try it. So how about it, huh? First pull after how long this has been sitting, I have no idea, right? I think the auger and impeller worked. I couldn't see it, you guys saw it, right? But I saw the shadows of it moving, so that works. Uh, it surges because the carburetor is probably dirty, so it needs a quick and dirty or maybe replacement, maybe. Uh, you can clean it out, you can get rid of the surging. Uh, I was turning the knee, the thing on the bottom, thinking that it was the fuel adjustment screw, but instead it was merely just the oil uh, gas drain from the bowl. You know, when you push it up, you can drain gas. When it did come out, I did see some um, brownish gas. So um, that has something to do with it. So I, I'm sure a quick and dirty will fix the surging. And uh, if it doesn't, I have another carburetor that we can replace, which is not really that tough. Uh, the bad part is, it didn't move. And I uh, tried to uh, engage the forward handle here for it to engage the transmission, it didn't move. I moved the gears around, it has two reverse and six forward gears as it normally does, and it didn't move at all. So something is not engaging for the drive. So that's the big part, that's the big issue. Let me set this up and we'll put it on its face and take the back bottom cover off. While we're at it, let's just try and see if the electric start works. Just put your extension cable in here. Throttle. Let's 
push. Okay, so you saw uh, electric start does work, and now we're going to tip it on its face. So we can check out this cable here where it goes. Uh -huh. As you can see, <laughs> there is already the pan removed, and I don't know where the pan is. It's okay, you don't need the pan. Anyway, so look, let's take a look. I'm, I'm just looking at it, same time you are. When you engage this, it does move. You move the wheel around, it does move. This uh, wheel does seem very um, worn down, unless that's just designed that way. But when you do engage it, does it touch? It does touch. So then why wouldn't it work? Unless there's no belt. Is the belt not spinning? So, um, I can't see anything wrong with it. We know that the auger was moving, which means this plate had to be moving, okay? The only reason that it could be is that maybe th is that this disc wasn't turning because if this disc was turning, there's no reason why the wheels wouldn't spin. Um, there are um, pins in there on the axle, so you know that if the axle turned, the wheel would the wheel would have turned, right? If this thing was spinning. Huh. Wait a minute, if this is spinning. If this was spinning, why aren't these wheels turning? Oh, look at this. See that? What do you guys see? <laughs> this axle here is floating with this. Because look, if this thing spun and I'm turning it, right? The wheel's not moving. Well, the reason why is because you could see Okay, now it's it's turning a little because it's touching here. See what we're missing? That's right. This is missing a bolt that is supposed to be attached to this axle. See? So the bolt goes in here. It turns this turns from that spinning, moves the chains, turns the axle. The reason why it wasn't turning was because there's no bolt there. X as a, as a key, you know what I mean? So I'll find a bolt, put it in there, and it should be good to go. Found a bolt that fits this hole perfectly. There you go. Flip it back around. Put a washer there. Doesn't matter if it sticks out a little too much, as long as it does not protrude past the chain, see? Because all it's doing is turning. And it feels like a 7 16 nut. You just put it on there and tighten it. And that's it. And hopefully this simple fix will uh, return our transmission into working order. 7 16 Yes, it is. I'm getting good at this just by seeing the size of the nut, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're a nut. You put the washers there so that you don't have to actually hold um, something over here because it grabs it. And I'm probably putting it too tight, but I don't want this bolt to fall out again. 
So there you go. Let's try it and see if it moves forward and backwards now. fantastic so satisfying to be able to just look down there and figure out why your transmission doesn't work you know I think most people that don't have any experience with fixing things right would just say oh my god my transmissions busted well when you think about a transmission you think about a car mostly right and everybody knows that even if you know nothing about cars if you have a busted transmission it doesn't work you're screwed right because they're so expensive that if you have a hoopty or a junker car you just basically get rid of it because it's not worth the labor and the parts to fix the transmission and even if you have a new car the transmission went you're screwed because that thing's like two three four thousand dollars on these new cars but uh <laughs> we fixed this one with just one single bolt that fell out sometime you know and uh the previous owner couldn't figure out why but I'm sure that if he would have taken it to the place where uh, he got it serviced, it would have figured it out pretty fast, you know? So just a bolt, now everything works. Now we have to fix the surging problem. I'm thinking the carburetor's just dirty. If I clean the carburetor and it works fine, we'll do a quick and dirty on it. We'll do a quick and dirty, we'll put it back on its place again because you can, you can have access to the bowl right here. And I don't have to take off the heater box or anything like that, you know what I mean? Let's just see. If that doesn't work out, then we'll probably have to um, replace the carburetor, which I have extras from my friends over at HIPAA360.com. Got a half inch wrench here. Because it's on its face, it shouldn't leak a lot of gas out from the gas tank. You're gonna have gas that comes out, of course, but it's not gonna continuously drip because the gas tank is on its side gas shouldn't even be reaching the hole through the tube and all that so here's the bowl nut and uh, it's clear I mean I could see sunlight through the hole you know which is why it runs but it doesn't run smoothly because there's another hole right there super tiny you can't even see it if that's slightly blocked you're gonna have surging problems but uh, the problem is with uh, surging is that usually Oh, this is surprising. Bowl is spotless, which means that I might have to remove the carburetor because to get access to that part where the pilot jet is, I have to remove the um, heater box to get access to it. Kind of a kind of a pain to get to, but this carburetor is clean, man. Surprisingly, really clean. I was hoping to see a lot of crap in there, which would cause the reason why it surges, you know? But apparently, it's not that. So, usually it's an internal thing, where some hidden hole that's molecular in size is plugged up that you can't even access. So sometimes if you put that into an ultrasonic cleaner, it'll work, sometimes. But I think, uh, I think my end result here is I, it was gonna have to replace the carburetor because of the surging. But I'm gonna make an attempt to first remove the heater box, try to access that area. I mean, technically you can access it through here, but you gotta remove the heater box to make it easy, you know? To get that um, pilot jet out there and clean that out. But let's, let's see if I can get um, this hole clear first. It's right there, you see it? A little tiny hole right there. There was absolutely nothing blocking that hole. That hole was clear. This is this uh, is in great shape. Uh, I will tell you though, 
that the inner part of this gasket had a piece that was coming out. It was hanging. That part that was hanging could have blocked this hole because it was right there. Uh, I wish I saved it to show you, but it was just like an inner piece of this gasket had come loose. You know, like when you tighten it too tight, like a crescent shaped strip came off and it was hanging right in front of that hole. So theoretically, if you had this on there floating around with the gas, right, that could have, that flap could have just covered the hole, right? Maybe. Uh, but now I took it off, so there's nothing blocking. I'm just going to shoot some fluid through the emulsion tube. Got to find it first. There you go. Can't see, Henry. Too bad. But like I said, this is a clean carburetor. Really clean. Surprisingly clean. Whoever uh, had this took care of it or he had it serviced regularly, like I said, and never really used it. So it's in good shape. This is a good snowblower. <laughs> kind of makes me feel like, wow, maybe I could get $500 for this. But it's all for a good cause. Giving it to my friend. A friend for ammo. Like I always say, if you guys follow my gun channel, you'll know that ammunition is far more uh, valuable than cash. Because in an apocalypse, in the future, civil unrest, <laughs> and that's coming, um, money will be worthless. You got a million dollars in a bank? Some Russian or Chinese hacker will steal it and you'll have nothing. So we'll all have nothing, but I'll have ammo. You don't have ammo. How are you gonna get your stuff? Anyway, if you'd like to check out my guns channel, mowers. <laughs>maybe we cleared it up i doubt it i still think i have to take the uh heater box off and uh try to clean that uh pilot jet area let's just see let's just see see if it runs better from doing that let the oil uh gas trickle down trickle 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 could just be bad gas too you know So what did you guys hear? It's better. It is definitely better. It surges less often. And I could take this thing down to almost half its speed and didn't stall until I, until I took it lower than that. So it is better for sure. Uh, that flap did contribute to the amount of gas going in there. But unfortunately, we're not going to be able to fix this unless I at least try to take... <clears throat> heater box off. It has to be done. This knob just pops off, which is the reason why it's missing on most snowblowers that you find. Got to get rid of these two bolts and that 5 16 Remember, muffler's hot. Not too bad, it's hot. And two Phillips over here to remove the heater box. Forward part of it from the bracket on the carburetor. If you replace the carburetor, you have to remove that bracket too. So now the heater box is free. Free! Oh, there's another one over here, I forgot. harder to get to. Four.
four screwballs to remove it. Let it clear the shaft for the knob. And remember that something is attached to it, which is the kill. You could take it off of this, so it's easier for you to move around. And I just did that. And there you can remove the heater box altogether, or you can let it hang. Right here is what I'm talking about. There's a little black cover that's covering this fixed jet, or that actually looks like the adjustment. Maybe if you just adjust that, it would be all right. Of course, you can't get your screwdriver in there because you got these things blocking, right? Should I remove this? The more stuff you take apart, the less likely you're going to remember to put it back. That's, of course, a quarter inch. It's a good thing I record this stuff because if this was your first time, you wouldn't remember what, what to take off and what to pull off and all that stuff. So listen, uh, I recently had a guy on Instagram who follows me and he took apart his snowblower and he couldn't remember where all that stuff went, so he was asking me. I'm like, listen, there's a million kinds of snowblowers out there. I don't remember either. It is fixed. It's not adjustable, so this is tight. That's what she said. I'm just gonna remove it. Come on, man, it's loose. That's what she said. There we go. This is what Donnie Boy 73 calls a pilot jet. And some people say, no, it's not a pilot jet. I said, sure it is. And it's clear. I was hoping it's blocked because then why is it surging is what I'm saying, you know? Let's blow it out anyway. Put your finger there because it'll spray back at you. That's a lot, Henry. Well. You want to make sure it's clean. Oh, there is this part here. I always forget. There's a teeny tiny hole here. And that may be blocked. But the problem is the hole is so small here that you need like a wired bristle from a bristle brush that thin to get it in that hole. That is a cause of a lot of problems. That hole there. You can't even get that other uh, pin that I had in there. Henry, just pick one. All right. You need a microscope to do this. Oh crap, did I just drop it? Oh shoot. I broke it though. Anyway, you guys get the picture. <laughs> or you could just do that. <laughs> and it's through there now. There we go, see? Place it back in there again. And it went all the way in. That's what she said. Where is that bracket? Oh. Now was it like... Was it like this? Or was it like this? Does it make any difference? I think it does. Because if it was like this, this part would be lower. Son of a bitch. I don't remember. Okay, so it does matter. Check this out. This is genius. So this part here is square shaped. This part here is round shaped. You could see clearly that this part is round and this part is square. You know, the, the part that was covered by this when it was on there. So I know now that the square part is on this side. <laughs> I love that. I love how you use like logic and stuff. How did that go? You know, 
know what I mean? I know you guys know what I mean. But uh, that was that was brilliant. I almost put that on long, and then I would have had to put the heater box back on again, whatever, and take it off. Blah blah blah. But now we know that it was on this way. I love it when that happens. You know, when you when you think hard. All right, you know what? I'm not going to put that on yet. Let's just see if it works, all right? All right, here we go. Let's pull it again. See if it surges. Got a pen cap, cut the end, pushed it down. There you go. So how about it, fellas? I put everything back together again. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I'm surprised at uh, how everything worked out great for me today. Um, almost immediately figuring out that it was missing a uh, bolt that uh, keeps the cog and the axle together, right? So we fixed the transmission. Uh, I thought I had to replace the carburetor, but it was simply just a cleaning. Quick and dirty didn't quite do it because it wasn't really that dirty. But that pilot jet right in there, kind of a pain to get to, but once we cleared that super tiny hole, it no longer surges and this thing runs great now. Everything on this thing works just fine. I really like it. Uh, it's a really good machine. You know, I've had a few of these before. They are very strong, you know, and uh, this is a uh, Tecumseh Snow King engine. It's a very good engine, you know what I mean? It's got good oil in it and everything. Uh, <laughs> honestly, this thing would sell for maybe $500 in the winter, you know what I mean? For a snowstorm announced. Gary? Better make me that deal real quick. I might change my mind. Anyway, this is good to go, man. Oh. Oh, duh. Throttle would be nice. Dum dum dum.
on, on mowers and blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.